Hello and welcome to this video on experiments for working out centripetal force. So we are in the lab today. We're going to be looking at a number of experiments that will tell us um, the size of centripetal force. There are three things that we could be looking at. Um, we could be looking at the speed, we could be looking at the mass, or we could be looking at the radius of the circle. The experiment for the radius of the circle is the one that I've got set up for you here. So I'll just take you through how to do the experiment, uh, how to look at the results and what to do with them. So I have my time up because I need to measure um, how long it takes. I have my um, set of weights with my one newton mass on the end. I have a bung on a string which is going through a piece of tubing and at the end of this string I've got a loop in it. So what I need to do is attach um, just by the loop here, hook the weight on. I am measuring this, I've already done the 10 centimeter one, I am measuring this so it, the length of the string at the top is 20 centimetres and then what you need to do is with the weight attached to the bottom and swinging freely is swing your weight around and it is better if you have two people to do this. You need someone to swing the weight and you need someone to count and do the timer. So we need to count the time taken for 10 rotations. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I will keep going with that and come back to you with the results in a second. Okay, so this is my results table here. You can see my hypothesis at the top was the time taken for a rotation depends on the length of the string. The length of the string was the bit that I'm changing, so that is my independent variable, and the time taken was the bit that I was measuring, so that was my dependent variable. So these are my results. What I need to do now is to work out an average. So the way that you work out an average is you add the numbers together and you divide them by the number that you have. So if I just unhook you from the clamp stand and take you over here, you will see that to work out the average for the first experiment, I've got four, five, and four. So I need to do four plus five plus four, equal your calculator, because sometimes um, calculators won't work properly if you don't do it like that, and then divide by three. For 20 centimeters, I've got five, six and five so that needs to be five plus six plus five again equal your calculator after you do this and then divide by three now the next one down is where it gets a bit tricky because the results i have for 30 centimeters are six two and five now you'll notice that these the two in the middle there looks a little bit odd so what i'm going to do draw a circle and a line through it. That is my numerous result, I'm going to ignore it. And when I work out my average, it's gonna be just six plus five, and then divided by two. The next set of results, I've got seven, seven, six. So that is seven plus seven plus six, equal your calculator, and divided by three. And then nine plus eight plus eight, again, equal your calculator, and divide it by three. Okay, so these are the averages that I've worked out, uh, 4.3, 5.3, 5.5, 6.6, and 8.3. I will draw the graph for you shortly. Okay, I'm ready to run my graph now, I have my graph, I have a nice sharp pencil, and I have my ruler. Okay, so you can see that I've drawn my axis on my graph. I have my independent variable down here on the x-axis, the radius of the circle, and I've got my units, which are centimetres. I've got my dependent variable up the y-axis, and I've labelled it the average time for 10 rotations. You need to be really clear when labelling the axis so that I know what you're talking about, and my units here are seconds. So let me quickly draw the graph. Um, 10 centimetres, it went up to 4. 3, 12 
20 centimeters it was 5.3 30 centimeters it was 5.5 40 centimeters it was 6.6 .6, and 50 centimeters it was 8.3 so that's my line there. Um, I'm now going to use a ruler to draw my line of best fit. Now, when you're drawing your line of best fit, what you need to do is to try and get it through going through most of the points. It doesn't have to go through all of the points. Um, if you think there's an anomaly, you should leave it out. But I am going to draw my line going through there like that. So it's um, nice and evenly spread between the five points. I've got three points on this side, two points on this side. All the points are roughly the same distance away from the line. Okay, so the size of the centipede, of course, like I said at the beginning of this video, depends on three things. The speed at which something is turning, the mass and the radius of the circle. So the speed, if something is moving faster, you're going to need a bigger centipede force to keep it going in a circle. The, if something has a larger mass, you're going to need a bigger centipedal force to keep it moving in a circle. And if your radius of your circle is um, smaller or larger, you're going to need a bigger, a smaller circle, you are going to need a bigger force to keep it moving in a circle because it has more going around to do.